rule number one about science communication. Yeah. Never do it with your mouth full. <laughs> really? I find that can be quite humanizing. <laughs> you know, science is exploration. The, the gap between what's known and what's unknown, that's where scientists are placed. The things that we are focused on are that stuff in the ambiguous range. Mm -hmm. the, the, I know half of that stuff might be wrong. Right, and half that stuff might be refined, and maybe only a little bit will make it back onto that whole kind of heap of uh, textbook stuff. I mean, the things that, that trip people up mostly is their notion of how science works. Mm -hmm. I'm very careful to talk about science as a process. I'm very careful to talk about models as being, you know, kind of our best guesses of how all these things fit together. And so I take a lot of time to talk about that even when it seems like it's kind of irrelevant to the main factual point I'm trying to get to. Should I pretend that science is completely value neutral and, uh, and that I have no opinion? Yeah. But you can't say at the same time that you're advocating for greater research funding for your pet projects uh, that you're not, oh, I'm not an advocate. Oh, I can't possibly be an I'm not an advocate. Oh, I don't get involved in politics. Funding decisions are politics. Uh, education priorities are politics. But, you know, like advocating for, a, for you know, a higher level of conversation, uh, advocating for information to be available for people to see, advocating against the fallacies and lies in the public sphere. Those are all good things to be advocating for. I don't think you should be ashamed to say that. I remember the, fir the first letter to the editor that I wrote about somebody's really stupid story. Uh, you know, I thought they'd thank me. <laughs> for, for pointing out that they'd completely misrepresented something. Instead, you know, they published my letter with like a whole another kind of half an article of uh, how my agenda was so obvious and, uh, and I was a really, really horrible person. You know, I've been through the wars a little bit more since then. I try to be a little bit more strategic in how I intervene in things. There are some things where just a little bit more context would help a lot. And there's other places where you're just kind of up against such a tsunami of nonsense that mm. your, your best bet is just to climb a tree and let it go let mm -hmm. it go past rather than to try and stop it. And I think it doesn't matter that, that we as a community quite often just kind of leave the, the space and the public discourse kind of between, you know, the headline and, and the actual papers and, and mm -hmm. scientific literature. We kind of leave that blank. You know, it's like a hinterland where we're not very happy. You know, I've, I've come to realize that unless we populate that kind of, that middle ground, it just gets crowded out by the people whose, uh, whose agendas are, uh, whose agendas are actually clearer, but not necessarily conducive to a well-informed public discourse. Mm -hmm. Scientists can provide illumination in a otherwise crowded and rather dark space. But sometimes, you know, if you're walking, uh, if you're walking through a park at night, even if it's dark, you can still go from one streetlight to the other and you feel a little bit safer. Right? Mm -hmm. you know, if, we're, if we're extending this metaphor probably a little bit too far. I'm not a, I'm not Impossible. A, I'm, not, I'm not a streetlight designer, uh, <laughs> nor am I an urban architect. The issue that we, that we have to, to address is why there aren't more lights. You can't do anything on your own. Why is it that when people come up to me at conferences, and they say, oh, gosh, oh, you know what, I really, I really like what you do. And I'm so glad that you do it because it means that I don't need to. That bothers me. If people came up to me and said, oh, you do that. And look, nothing really terrible has happened to you. I, I will help out and I will do something as well, you know. And, and I realize that, you know, if I do, you know, this is still this mythical person that comes up to me. I can do a little bit and then they can do a little bit and together we can provide as much light as, as is required. I'd be much happier with that kind of comment. You know, if you're going to have any, any real impact, you have to find ways of multiplying what it is that you do independently. More lights so that you can see what's coming up, <laughs> I guess. That you love that I, metaphor. I, I, yeah, no, I, I mean, you know the metaphor that, yeah. It, it it's, works. It's, it's really quite good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah.